grew up in a very secular environment, even in Pakistan, or wherever I've been. I've always grew up in a very like a niche society of Pakistan, or niche society wherever I've been. So I never had that religious association in my, in my life. Even though my maternals, uh, they're a bit religious, but they're not actually all around the religious. But my maternal side, there's no religiosity. Like they are just for the name. My father's side, yeah. So there's no religiosity whatsoever. But it is, but it's more in regards to how I came out of Islam is because I'm a sexual abuse survivor. Sorry? I'm a sexual abuse survivor. So I was abused when I was young. And a lot of men, a lot of boys in Pakistan have been through what I've been through. Yeah, I've been hearing, I've done some research, I heard of it. And they're doing this in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, uh, like, just name it. In the north, the Middle East, yeah. So, unfortunately, this is a right issue. But there's, a, there's like, a lot of people say there's not a religious connection there, but I say there is a religious <laughs> So, that's... That's what the issue is. Where I say, I as a survivor, when I read about hadiths and when I read about Quran, I can clearly, with all conscience, and I can say, I'm not going to agree with this. I as a human being, I'm much more morally better because I resonate with survivors. I worked with survivors, sexual abuse survivors, which I worked with children. I worked with so many people like this. I have come, I've joined NGOs. I've spoken to so many people I, I can't account for. And all of them have this shared trauma and all of them, I, some of them are emotionally scarred for life. Some of them are physically scarred for life. Some of them are mentally scarred for life. There's so many things that can happen to a child. And when I see that, and when I see that when I read 65 verse 4, anyone can say whatever they feel. Is that about the marriage laws? Yes. Where you could marry um, yeah. a female who's not yet um, of the age of bleeding. Exactly. Okay. And when I see that, and I read the hadith, I, I, I can, I'm yeah, like, you no. can't agree with it. No, I'm like, okay, that's it. Should we move a bit closer yeah. to those people to block off yeah. the I, I'm like, no, I can't agree with that. Mm. Whatever you can say to me, however you want to put it across to me, I will smash you for it. Because I'm not going to say, oh, okay, but yeah, but let's have a conversation why this is okay. No, yeah. this is not okay. You're saying there's no room for debate about that, it's just wrong. It's a child you're talking yeah, about, child, yeah. right? If physically, if emotionally, a child is being sexualized, and then the child grows up, puberty comes in, and then they start thinking for a second. What am I sexually? The sexual, uh, the sexuality comes in question. Like, am I gay? Because men liked me. Oh, am I bisexual? Oh, am I straight? What am I? Am I asexual? You go through that. A child does not need to think about these things. Yeah, they're too young. They're, they're too young. You've already sexualized the child to a point where now you are saying to me that I'm speaking to a child, and a child tells me. I can't, I'm emotionally damaged. I feel like I can't, I can't reason about things. I, I can't have a conversation. I can't sit around a room with men because I feel odd. So when I listen to all these things and then someone is trying to reason with me about, okay, why did you leave Islam? I left Islam because if he being the best moral character for all mankind through the end of time, that moral character, I would bash that moral character in and out. I wouldn't care for a second what anyone thinks of me. I've had, in these past two weeks since that video came out, where I actually abused Muhammad and Allah, people, yeah, I watched yeah, the videos. people, people are giving, giving me death threats. Serious? On my face, wow. online. And people have taken away my livelihood. But you know what? I will still say and advocate for children and say, I, for me, screw you. I don't care. You can say whatever the hell you want, do whatever the hell you want, but you're not going to shut me up. Yeah, this is yeah, yeah, because coming from a human rights perspective, yeah. I think we should be protecting children, oh, man. not finding ways of how to abuse children. Exactly. And what I notice in some of these countries, what they do, the hijab, so hijab it means like covering, but yeah. hijab in the sense of this. Um, it's centralizing young children because it's trying to say that from the age of nine years old yeah. or so that they're an adult. Yeah. There's no way that they're an adult. Some yeah. girls of this age is not even on their cycle. 
And the thing is, is that uh, children just need to be left alone. Exactly. You know, they so, need to be left alone. Like a lot of people will say to me, oh, would you have the same passion when it comes to church? Or when it comes to like a church? I would like, I would bash them yes, as we well. Have the, yeah. If they would say, if this is in synagogue, if it is in Mandir, in a Hindu temple, if this is in anywhere, it is anywhere I will say it out and I will say, screw you. Yes, because in Bangladesh, yeah. they're doing um, Hindu child marriages. You know, I, I expose that as well. Okay. And I think wherever it's going on, we should go against it. Now, it's very interesting because when you look at the Catholic Church that did certain things, yeah. people came out and spoke out against this. Yes. So why can't we speak out against somewhere else anywhere anywhere, anywhere it's I, I would say even though uh, even though what happened in South America or in Philippines when people would travel all to these poorer countries just to marry off a child and to yeah, you, buy, buy a child whether they're Christian whether they're Muslim whoever the religion they belong to I would say screw you if, but if Islam the context is why a lot of people say like why do I bash Islam I bash Islam for that reason because if you're going to present me a human being who is marrying a child and is okay fair he marries her at six and then he ties her tying is a technique that he uses on her yes tying that's right? in the hadith that's, I what's, what's that tying like they you, you do just this a lot in rubbing Hebrew. rubbing the genitals between a child that's it's written in the hadith yeah this is in hadith it's, it's under sharia law yeah it's sharia law it's, 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 it's written hadith. on the also, book in yes the, uh, Hindu, well, they put that the child marriage is the uh, boy and girl is tied yeah. But yeah, in uh, it's, it's Islam, the moment by the six years old girl. Yeah. So yeah. him marrying a six year old and then tying her and then the the consummating the marriage uh, no. at age of nine, I would say screw that. No. I would not I would not resonate with her whatsoever. I would bash them whether it's him, Ali Dawa, whether it's Muhammad Jab, whoever these people are. Whoever these people are. Amen. 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 Whoever these people are, I would tell them straight. I would like, you're, you follow a pedophile and you think that your religion is better than everyone else. You follow in the premise, your beginning as a, as a Islam comes from a pedophile. I'm sorry, I'm going to test your old time or a character. People will say to me, okay, Isaac married Rebecca at the age of three. How they prove to me? Karen, um, yeah. the, the, you know, going to the well and yeah. big, exactly. the So how could a three-year-old Exactly. Do? That's so where they, they show me, they show me the it's argument. An argument to justice. Exactly. But the thing is, and I say, okay, present me the argument. I will look at it and I will say, screw this as well. Just show me, prove me the source, and I will exactly say what, what I will say. I, I've got an argument, actually, sure. because I would say that there's parts in the Bible where the, there was a marriage age of, tw of 20 years and up. Yeah. So that's actually from research that I've done looking at the Bible. Yeah. There was arguments 20 years up, that's where they would marry. So no one would have married at 12 or 14 or 15. Muhammad is asshole. Yeah, I think she's, she's trying to get rid of Oh, yeah, she, she, uh, yeah she's yeah. a she's a rock tear. Yeah. No, she, she's doing it deliberately, she's yeah. rolling, yeah. So um, the thing is, is that um, what, what type of information do you think that you can bring to a lot of the people of the Middle East, you know, to Pakistan, to Iran, Afghanistan? Because even the other day I watched a video, I believe this could have been in either Afghanistan or Pakistan, I'm not sure. Where a guy, he pulled out an AK, right? Because the child that he was trying to marry, she wanted to run the Pakistan. It was a Pakistan in a smaller city. Okay, can we move here? Because, yes. Sorry, is it okay if we can just move back a bit? Is it okay if we can move back a little bit? Sorry about that. Yeah, because she's doing it for a reaction yeah. because Ali Dawa is there. Yeah. She's deliberately trolling him. So, so I have to, in all honesty, I have to say quite clearly, in Pakistan, you can marry off your child because Muhammad did it. They are yeah, that, that, up, yeah, that yeah. absent minded. They're not looking at how it can affect a child. A child can be can be 
a child can be penetrated yes, was. and they are open about these conversations in very rural areas in Pakistan. Even yes, in the rural areas. Even in the slums of Lahore, Lahore being such a modern city, a moderate city, yeah. in Karachi or Islamabad, you would see pockets of area. There's a place called inner inner city Lahore, uh, which okay, is in Urdu it, in yes. Urdu it's called Andrun Lahore. You can find child marriages happening over there to this day and people don't even bat an eyelid because it's a predominant Muslim area. Yeah. This happens in that filth and I honestly say that no whatsoever these people need to be need to be brought down the justice of God should be brought upon them and I completely have got no sympathy, sympathy for whatsoever. I'm um, sorry, I am yeah. sounding I'm sounding about quite harsh, but I am No no harsh. you're not harsh, you're speaking facts and you have to understand if someone has gone remember number one you come from this environment. Yes. So this is not Islamophobia. you um, Pakistan is maybe 91, 92 percent Muslim. Yeah. So you're born in this environment yeah. and also you come from a background where you've had this experience where something has happened to you. So I 100% sympathize with you and I can understand why you're so passionate about this. Yeah. You know, and um, I would like to even apologize even though I wasn't there and I didn't do anything because, you no, know, this is... But you will be, you'll be, you'll be shocked for the fact people come up to me and make fun of that that I have been sexually abused. It's disgusting. Child. And people make make arguments with me and reason with me that they say it's okay. To justify, yeah, it's disgusting. Literally, people like Muhammad Hijab who would justify child marriages and yes, they... I saw him in the park. Right? He justified it. Literally. I think it was yeah. a five Ali Dawa would justify it. Uh, this would call all these Islamists will justify it. And I will... Islam, they yeah. Islam. And I will call them out and I will say all of you vile people, you're going to justify a pedophilia, a, a prophet who is a pedophile. I would denounce anyone who is a pedophile. I would completely tarnish them right there and then. But the thing is, you can reason with me, but you don't know. Because the thing is, being a man, so masculinity kicks in, right? Oh, we are men, we need to grow up, we don't, need, we don't care about these emotions and feelings. I care about that damn child. Yeah, we but, have to care about the right? children. Yeah. But the thing is, they, they don't think that way. To them, it's a masculinity culture, right? Where the masculinity kicks in where... But okay. it's not masculine. I'll tell you why it's not masculine. Yeah. You see, the ability for someone who is um, a human being, a man, an adult, is the strong should also be able to have compassion for the weak, right? And those who are not able to defend themselves, which are children, women, disabled and the elderly, right? And this is why I say I'm not even coming from a religious perspective, yeah. I'm coming from a moral perspective. Exactly. I'm not saying that I disagree with so many, you know, I agree with a lot of things in Christianity. I'm not a Christian, but I, you know, I'm really interested in these stories because even I was speaking to a, there was a Pakistan guy and he's rang me at three or four o'clock in the morning to debate with me on why it's okay to marry children. You're joking. No, I'm not joking. And in uh, Pakistani, I, 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 why am I not surprised? Yeah, on he his... was debate, and he, he, he did a research on Google, and then he's showing that in Shia Iran, yeah. between the age of 19 and 13. And I'm saying, what type of foolishness is this? Exactly. Just because a woman is starting her cycle doesn't mean that she's ready to bear children or to have sex. It's preparing, preparing them, yeah. but it takes at least between five to eight years yes. for them to be able to. Right. So it's like when you look at Bob, for example, he believes they should move the age from 16 to 18. And I, can't, I cannot disagree with him. He has a very good argument for why it should be moved yeah. to if you think about it, a child of even 13 cannot comprehend fully what is going on, going with a grown man, yes. you know, but someone who's around the age of 17, 18, those kind of ages, they will start to comprehend a lot better. Because the thing is, when I when I spoken to all these uh, young people in their 20s who've been sexually abused, even they say that if the sexual age, the sexual consent age goes up in this country, they would rather have that any day 
because it gives more protection to a 16 year old too. Yes. Because even they believe when they were 16 year old, and and especially they were being abused, they were very cautious about even sitting next to a person that they might feel as a yes, any, an anyone issue. would be, yes, right? whatever age. But the thing is that, but at them at 16 years of age, they have an issue. So can you imagine, that's why I would love for people to actually come together and have a discussion. But the thing is, if you're going to try reasoning with me, I'm coming back to the very point. You're going to reason with me about pedophilia as a Muslim. Yeah, there's no reason. There's no reasoning with me. No reason. I am going to, I'm going to abuse your Muhammad and I'm going to abuse your Allah. I'm going to curse them for two things. Allowing pedophilia and allowing that to happen to Aisha. That's it. Yeah. And um, I, I've heard in the park there is people who want to, you know, even if we're moving slightly on, but there's people who want to vouch for child marriage. I've seen the debates here in the room. And for things like slavery. Yeah. Because when we talk about slavery, this one gets very tricky. And I tell you why. Let's move a bit closer. Yeah. So they don't. The, the, the slavery issue gets very tricky because, okay, you have hadith and you have Quran. Many Muslims cannot agree on the hadiths which they want to agree with or believe in or not. And then you have the Quran. In the hadith, for example, like Sahih, which is um, reliable, we're finding that Muhammad was, he traded two blacks to redeem an Arab. Yeah and also sex slavery. Yes. These two things are very problematic. And I've heard people trying to defend this. And you know why? Tell me. Because if they don't defend him while the Quran is giving birth, they're making him the best example for all mankind, they will contradict. And especially once you abuse Islam and once you abuse Muhammad, that's it. You're done with. You're done. You're done out here. That's it. You're gone. You just, there's not the, this is why Islam is so easily crumbled because of all of the stupidity and these people want to want to uh, keep hold on a man, a 7th century, as I say in the camera, a 7th century cavern robbing, pedophile, a nasty rapist and a slave trader. And there we go. And the one who called Ethiopians raisin head, yes. because if the, if the black person has a face who's wrinkled or who has a hair, yeah, the and reason is dark brown, yeah. that's it. Literally, what what example do you guys follow? Like that's where I say, yeah. looking at a black person in Pakistan, they will laugh at you because you walk on the street. Oh, hapsi, hapsi, kala. Hapshi, yes. Kali, Handi, the words they will use for you, racial slurs that they use. How is that okay? And I, as a child, I have more morally superior than grown up people calling a black person Kala, Hapshi, mm -hmm. and I'm asking my mother, Mom, why would they say some stuff like this in Pakistan? Yes, because you have a remnant of blacks that was taken there in the Islamic slave trade. Yes. The, the cities, they were taken there in the slave trade. And then a lot of the people in Pakistan are not really treating them in an equal level, they're treating them as actual inferiors. Yes. And um, it's very interesting because when we talk about this, I'm starting to find now that you have what is called Arabism, yes. where it's suppressed other cultures. I was speaking to a Turk last night. He, he has no clue about his history, absolutely none. Right? Luckily, I've spoke with Turks who know their history. And what he's saying is that, oh, their original language was in Arabic. I said, no, it's not in Arabic. Seriously? You lot took on Arabic, Arabic script, right. but not. it's not Arabic. Ar original Turkish looks very similar to Paleo-Hebrew. Yes. yes. And they originally come from Asia. Asia. The Mongols and those people, they're related to them, related to Genghis Khan. Now, there's other scripts, for example, within the part of the Middle East or the Indian subcontinent. Is it, um, help me out, is it Urdu or one of them? They're using the Arabic script. Yeah, we, uh, Farsi and Urdu Farsi. are literally written like the way Arabic would, without the Zayr Zabar. Okay. Without the, without the, uh, what do you call the connotation that you say, it is an yeah. R or E or what sound is it? Yeah. Lowercase, uppercase, that's how it sounds. Yes. So this is sounding methodology that is used in Arabic, but in Urdu, in Farsi, we don't use such things. Oh. But even though but you're is so, it using the Arabic script then? Yeah, like it's written Urdu. like in the Arabic. Okay. Yes. So we have like Aleph, Ba, 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 ba. like in 
Arabic, but we say Aleph, Be, Be, Te. So, so ah, we yes. say so differently, different. but it's very similar. Like in Arabic, they don't have, uh, like they don't have, uh, what's it called? Uh, what word is it? They don't have P, so they don't have Pa. We have, they have, uh, so they they would say everything to be B. So they wouldn't say Pakistan, they would say Pakistan. So we do have that difference, but it's very similar to the way they are. But I have to say Arabization, the point you brought up beautifully. Yes, it's very deep. Egypt, Egypt is the best example. Pakistan and India and Afghanistan are the best example. Iran is the best example. Declare it openly so every pedophile apologist well, knows. more expose it. Exactly. So every pedophile apologist knows that we are here and we are going to say, we are not going to resonate with it. Yeah, you can try. Accept this not, exactly. Yeah. We are going to say, screw you and screw your prophet uh -huh. and screw your false card. Yeah. So, so would you say then that within the Muslim community, but especially more so the Middle East, they need to have these discussions to say that it's wrong. Like for example, I saw in Yemen, there was one woman, she tried to make some laws against the child marriage, but you even had many women protesting against her, you know? And this is very problematic because, okay, on one side, they want to go with what the religion is saying. On the other side, you're seeing something where it's morally wrong. She realizes deep in her heart that this is morally wrong. She's going against it. But now she's getting a fight from women. And it's really sad because a woman... How do I explain it? A woman just has a nature to understand... Because Emotionality, yes. Yes, she can carry a child for yeah. 9 to 10 months. So it was really scary when I saw women defending this behavior. It wasn't one or two, it was several. Can I, can I tell you why women would defend it? Tell me. So if you see, if you have no emotional connection, you're completely drived in, unfortunately in the West and even in Middle East. Some people are so self-obsessed within themselves that they just care about their particular feelings, but they don't care about what the other person might go through if anything happens to them. It's all about, as long as it's not happening to me, it's fine. So I can just say, yeah, whatever happens, it's not my issue. happened to a lot of them though, or they have relatives. You know what I think it is? My mother and my friend made some point, and they said that certain times a woman is as good as the men that she's around. Because naturally a man, a man is like a leader. So you can have some type of men that can lead the woman to do some wrong, or that can lead her to be good or to be a better woman. Absolutely. So if there's a lot of women, a lot of men, that is leading the woman into this kind of nonsense, that is supporting this kind of that is supporting this kind of rubbish. This is the environment they're around or born in. Yeah. Like for example, you have um, I don't want to touch on this, but I'll top up touch. Okay. I've seen an interview with the son of the Hamas leader, right? And he's now blasting Hamas. Yeah. Right? So some people tried to say, oh he's Islamophobic, because I think he might be an apostate. I'm not sure. He is an apostate. He is an apostate, yeah. He said, how can I be, have a phobia of this? This is my natural environment. Yeah. Like even when they were saying that in Palestine, and this is why I suggest that black people need to stop supporting this bullshit. Yeah. In this Palestine, right, they are openly calling the blacks Abid. Yes. Which literally means slave. Slave, yeah. Why are we, why are we supporting this group? I'm not saying that what's going on there is, is not bad. Of course it is bad. A people who care nothing about black people that openly call black people slave, why would we support this? You know, it, it makes no logical sense. Because why? When you know, when these Arabs who know the Quran inside out and the Hadiths and they read everything in their own Arabic language, they're going to be okay with everything their prophet has done without thinking because it... it, it don't, I know, I know you're not a Christian, you might not believe in supernatural yeah. itself, but there is seriously, but there is a serious demonic spirit that holds to these Muslims. I try reasoning with these people about anything, about slavery, about black people, about, about the horrendous things that you can find in Islam. They constantly reason and argue with you that it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I say, no, it's not 
okay. You know why they're saying that though? Because Muhammad is it. And they're showing that they don't like black people. Exactly. They're showing that they don't like black people. They're showing that they believe slavery is okay. That they believe sex slavery is okay. Even some silly things that I've seen like um, drinking camel urine. Yeah. Come on, who is doing this rubbish in 21st century? So some people ask me, oh, but where do they do that? They don't do that anymore. Yes, they do. They do in Pakistan. Go to Saudi Arabia, in yeah. Pakistan as well. Yeah. I knew Saudi Arabia and Yemen, they're doing this. Yeah. Now tell me, how can camel urine heal anyone? Um, oh. Muhammad said so, that's why. Literally, just blindly follow. Don't reason with anything. Don't argue about anything. Blindly follow a stupid pedophile who is okay with whatever you want to say. We will say, do this, they will do it. Just because they are following a political ideology which gives them a bit of a tiny bit of a power and then a, a, a little man syndrome is what they have. Because the thing is they constantly have this, oh, we we have a prophet who is perfect. Whatever he says, we are going to accept it without thinking, without rationalizing. That's why in Islam, it's such a beautiful thing that they say, cuckoo beautiful, if you know what I mean, sarcastically. Brother, yeah, no, brother don't, think for, don't think from the brain, just think from the heart. Once you start thinking, you leave Islam. What stupidity yeah, is this? I heard a few people say that. What is this? I've seen, I've seen apostates like the Somali apostates, the Pakistan, the Iranian, people from all over the Middle East. And these are the same things that they're saying. They're saying that a god could not tell them to go and kill people to rape to you know do child marriage to all of these things and people are trying to silence them but i'm meeting several of these people who are either atheist or they are christian and they're saying this is not something morally just that we need to be following not in the 21st century but they're saying also in the seventh century this was not good to follow. because i think they would say at that time well people have come up to me and say that time it was okay to child marriage. I'm like, okay. At that time it might be okay to do child marriage. But I was okay then. But I would not I was still say it still is not okay. Screw yeah, your okay. Muhammad and screw your prophet. I don't care. It still is not okay. If he's such a best moral example, why would he why would he do this? You're you uh, you're saying because it's for all time. Exactly. Because he, he is. Uh, because that's, that's, what, that's what the Quran says, right? He's it's for all, all time, time the best example. You're pedophile. Sorry, you're Pedophile being the best example for all times. I'm not, in, I'm not involved. Yes, yeah. stuck for Allah. Yeah. How dare you say no, that? No, I say get stuck for Allah or get stuffed for Allah. Literally, mm. I the, these people would give me. I have had thousands of reasons since 2017. I've left this now. I've had so many conversations with so many different Muslims, and they all have come up with million reasons for justification for pedophilia. Yeah, just wrong because the thing slavery. Is, you name it, they've justified it's everything. They tried it. The thing is, it's wrong, right? Because a lot of these people who make these arguments, would they give their child for marriage? Some of them will. I've seen people saying some of them would give their child, but with the vast majority of them would not. So the mere fact that they would not do it lets you know straight away that this is wrong, right? And some people come with the argument that at nine years old that time she was an adult. This is totally flawed. I'll tell you why in two main reasons. One, she used to play with the dogs, yeah. and that is haram, haram. Yes. right? That's haram um, for the adults. So that's the first one. The second one is, they're saying in that time she would have been more mature. Yeah. Now the question is, well, how mature would the nine year old have Because if we look at the Americas, they dug up an Inca relic. She was maybe 12 or somewhere around. She looks no different from a 12 year old today. And that's over 2000 years ago. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. And also in that time in the desert, they, they had like less proteins and stuff. So that means you would actually mature, you would mature at a slower rate. So that means this, the argument is weak. Exactly. You see, even, even for But the issue is, in all honesty, the issue is, one, because they're saying, you as a man, you as a human being, you need to accept it because he is from Allah. 
they will give you uh, now because you've presented an argument but they will still challenge you this is my argument against them but you're saying there's no logic there. there's no logic because Islam is all illogical imagine this that the Muhammad the job somewhere I've done this degree I've done that degree I've done disagree you can do whatever degrees you want to come with me I work, uh, where I work we used to sorry come with me and try having a conversation with that with a very uh, young child that you are you're trying to reason about these things with imagine doing that in front of a child who has been through all of that I, I would challenge you if we does have the straight way that man is a psychopath you know I would like to take your contact or something sure and meet with some of the people you're having discussions with and you know I would like for further discussions on this because yeah. um, you know I think when it just comes to children man it's demonic it, it, you know this stuff will make you cry exactly it's really sad and to have human beings in this day and age defending this it's wrong and I think where the hypocrisy is I'll be very honest I'm not here to be a coup but I'm gonna tell you how it's if we had regular white people that was vouching for these things and saying it's okay, there would be a big uproar. But for the mere fact that you have another, then we just avoid it, you know? So I think we have to be fair on both, on all levels. You know what I'm saying? Because if white people did it, we'd quickly condemn it. So why is it that other people are allowed to do it and say it? And nobody wants to say anything, you know? It's been a lovely conversation. Lovely conversation. I will have to get your contact. You will do. For sure. No worries. This, you've inspired me. When I'm watching your videos, and again, this is coming from a moral point and a human rights point. Like, like what you said. There's no way I can listen to what you said and not get some level of emotion. Exactly. There's no way. But people, people, I'm not human. people have told me I'm way too emotional. Literally, people have said that to me on, no, on the chat. Be... And I'm saying, I, so I need to be completely blind, emotionless when I'm talking about children, when I'm talking about myself. I need to be blind and just, and just show complete factual things. I present you an argument and say this is what happened and that's what happened. Now make up your mind. What stupidity is No, you're this? a human being. Exactly. You're a human being. Like we are emotional creatures. We yeah. have a bond between us. That's it. That's it. Holy, this is Holy why... Holy Spirit uh, drive him that yeah. time. Sorry? Holy Spirit drive him that time. That, yeah. that time he get the Holy Spirit and mm. Holy Spirit speaking with the, him. Mm. You see, this is what I will say. Of course, a man should not be emotional like how a woman is. But there's things that will emotionally touch you. And I think a traumatic experience like this, you have every right to be emotional. And this is something where no one, do not let anyone tell you that you cannot feel a certain way or you have every right to feel the way that you feel. And you're totally justified and, you know, we need to do some work together, I believe. And, um, you know, I would like to see some of the children you're working with and stuff. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm sorry, man. This is just an emotionally touching thing, man. Sorry, man. But it's nice to speak to you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, so, what was the name, sorry? Um, call me Ben. Ben, Ben. God bless you guys. I would have to say that no matter what, again and again, I would say, I can have conversations with people. I can speak about all of these atrocities committed against a child. All of the drama. Anyone can justify, come Muslims, Hindus, Christians, Buddhists, you name it. Anyone maybe try reasoning with me about anything when it comes to children and uh, abuse. I'm not going to take it. I am so glad that the people are actually listening and trying to understand that where am I coming from. Because a lot of people have been commenting and saying, I'm too emotional. Someone like me who's been through what I've been through and the children that I worked with, what they've been through in their life, I am going to be emotional. If you don't like it, well, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. 
I can't help you whatsoever. But I have to say, guys, if you can, God bless you all. Please follow me on Twitter, uh, or now known as X, as Francis Bull, uh, Francis underscore uh, Bull, and then on on uh, what do you call it? On YouTube, as Francis underscore Bull. You can find me on on YouTube. You can find me around uh, what do you call it? These places. I will ask people to uh, tag what do you call it? Uh, my links, so you can contact me. And guys, please pray for me. Even though I might get death threats, but I get good some good, some good people too who would converse with me and say that whatever it is, at least they resonate with me. So God bless you guys. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, thank you for all your uh, concern and thank you for all your love. So peace of Christ be with you all. God bless you and thank you. Please pray for me, guys. Take care.